give you some more clarity on, on what, what these things would be, um, <coughs> it means that I give you the example of the consultant having to pay with holding tax for the first earner, the euro he earns. Well, treaties may provide thresholds that taxation in the source state will only come about if there is a minimum uh, economic presence, either in duration or in substance, to make sure that not somebody coming down the stairs of an aeroplane is the first thing he or she has to do is pay tax. So that is what treaties try to provide, a threshold that economic activity has to come to life before taxation actually occurs. I already mentioned uh, mitigation of source state taxation on investments, uh, which actually entices investments one, once the source taxation goes down. So that's a good thing of, of, of trees. Taxation of wages, uh, personnel, let's say if you have a dredging company going to dredge in a, in a, in a port, uh, you will have staff working on, on this project. And will those wages be taxed? Will all these people have to file tax returns? Administrative burden is often a very important issue. Not just the tax you have to pay, but how much trouble you have to go to in getting, uh, setting up an administration and to file tax returns, <coughs> uh, finding a tax advisor doing all the work for you. That is often very cost, high cost for investors and then uh, reflecting trade and investments. Um, I'll skip on discrimination, there's very technical issue. Uh, another very important feature of treaties would be uh, a new, what is called a mutual agreement procedure. It means that if there is, by some means, there is still double taxation left, the treaty doesn't function properly, there is a, a problem which was not foreseen, so things like that. The competent authorities of both states sit together and try to find a solution. And for investors, it's good to know that the competent authorities will do that, that it provides a platform for solving issues which you cannot solve in court in many times. I mentioned already uh, the State Secretary of the Netherlands and his Colombian counterpart um, have, have expressed their wish to, to finalize the ongoing negotiations on, uh, uh, on short notice. What are they trying to achieve? Uh, the Netherlands, historically, to start there, is a relatively small economy. Um, so the domestic market in the Netherlands is not economically uh, big enough support uh, large-scale companies. So if we want our economy, Netherlands economy, to prosper, we must supply the companies which are Netherlands companies, we want them to supply them a level playing field abroad, make sure that they are able to compete in the world economy at uh, good uh, conditions. And we try to make them compete at local conditions. So uh, if a Dutch company like Shell is operating in you name any country you like, because it wants to go all over the globe. We want them to compete at tax levels, which are the, the ones in the country where they earn the money. Um, and we want them to invest abroad. We also want other countries, companies, to come and invest in the Netherlands, because that generates uh, work for Netherlands people. So there's a mutual interest for us in either promoting investment abroad and trying to get other investors to invest in the Netherlands economy. And we want legal certainty for investors. We want them to know if they enter into a project that they can predict what the outcome of the project will be in financial terms. Colombia has made a shift. Uh, it has been touched upon by, by, uh, by the previous speakers. And uh, when I come to Colombia, I'm amazed to see how quick developments are, are going uh, in, in what you can see, the people you meet, the, the, the way they, they work. Um, and the economy is growing quickly. Uh, so it's an interesting market for Netherlands companies to invest in. And I think there is uh, a lot the Netherlands has to offer. Uh, we have discussed the sectors which uh, are uh, interesting for Netherlands companies to, to invest in Colombia. Uh, I think there is a lot, lot of mutual interest there, with a lot of, um, of getting together. Uh, and there is, on the other hand, you like the exports to, to the Netherlands. Netherlands is like the, the gateway to Europe for companies which come from abroad, uh, mainly because of the logistical facilities we have in Schiphol Airport and in the Port of Rotterdam, and 
the exports which are coming from Colombia to the Netherlands are actually not only for the Netherlands economy, but they are passed through the Netherlands to the rest of Europe. So we are an interesting uh, destination for exports abroad, coming in from abroad, and we try to stimulate those exports actually coming to the Netherlands. You see the, the picture of what the policy makers in Colombia, what they have for the future of Colombia, it's not it's not only the opening of the economy, it's also their, they have a vision of their role in the economy in Latin America. And their main goal is that they want to become a regional hub. Um, and that's why they look at Netherlands, because Netherlands, as I just mentioned, is also a regional hub. We try to attract like Japanese headquarters servicing the entire Europe continent. And they are trying to get investors from abroad to invest in Colombia servicing the Latin American country. And that may be actually may be a winner because Netherlands companies have big trouble like with their investments in Brazil because the legal system in, in, in Brazil is much less reliable. So if that's better to service Brazil via Colombia, that may be very interesting. There may be other countries in Latin America which also can be serviced through uh, Colombia. So there's a there's a possibility that two systems may, may actually be matching uh, much more than they have in the past. And it would be a hub not only in holding companies, so in having uh, subsidiaries all over here in Latin America, but also a regional hub in logistics, where a lot of work uh, can be done and should be done, I think, and there's a lot of opportunities there. And uh, 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 regional hub in, in services, so in, in, in uh, legal or financial other services. And there's a lot of growth, I think, possible there, especially since the education level in, in Colombia, from what I know, is, re is relatively high for the continent, so there's prospects there. Um, I'll save you the examples because I'm already being waved with a flag that my time is running out. Um, but look at the slides. It will give you an idea of what, what, what we're trying to achieve here. We want to make sure that a company from the Netherlands doing short-time dredging for only two months or so will not have to pay tax right away because the it's a burden is too high for a simple project. Uh, we want to make sure that using knowledge in Colombia which is bought or, or otherwise obtained from the Netherlands is not too expensive and that means we have to find a way in the treaty to get the source state taxation down. Um, we want to make we want to have certainty on the application of, of transfer pricing rules, to use the magical word. And we want to make sure that Colombian companies may have good interest in getting their, if they want to set a foothold in Europe, that they choose the Netherlands as their primary goal. So that's what both our countries are trying to achieve, and we're working very hard on that. <coughs> so what is going on? We've, as I mentioned, we have been uh, working on this for, for uh, some time with the uh, Colombian authorities, but things have gone now in a much higher pace, and we expect to, uh, to finalize this on a civil servant level um, in the course of this year. Uh, then the real problem would be, real problem, the time consuming part would be that we have to go to a ratification process in both our parliaments. Um, Netherlands, that takes about a year. Uh, in Colombia, unfortunately, it takes a little bit longer because there is a lot of work to be done with the Constitutional Court and with both uh, Chambers and Parliament, which are still getting used to the concept of, uh, of tax treaties, so there's some time there. Um, but we feel that it would be a trigger to, uh, to new trade. Then, just a little step aside, customs agreement, as I mentioned already, free trade agreement uh, with the European Union, uh, I think it was signed by the Netherlands government last week. And it should be signed by the Colombian government, I think, in, uh, in two months' time, or, or maybe in June already. Um, <clears throat> that will take time because it will have to be ratified in all countries. And the, the good thing of it would be that the, uh, the customs duties would disappear, so it would make uh, imports and exports much cheaper, um, and therefore make it more vi economically viable to, to export and import. Uh, both sides. Um, it will be applied uh, before I can get the, uh, the ratification process as we finalize in all countries, but unfortunately that will not go for the 
the custom duties part, which is which is a pity, of course, because that's the beef of the uh, of the agreement. Um, the Netherlands will uh, enter into negotiations on a short notice with the Colombian government on a what I call an icing on the cake, so a customs agreement on top of the uh, free trade agreement with uh, with the European Union. The reason for that is that we want to facilitate export and import going on uh, by working with uh, authorized economic operators. So that means that we will, for those people who are actually designed to be uh, authorized economic operators, that they will not have their trades being subjected to physical uh, checks. They will have administrative checks, which will make it much easier and we work towards what we call a single uh, one-stop shop. So uh, if you have the, this operator and he has done all the paperwork, then all the flow from the, uh, right from the plant to the customer and the other side of the world is one process. So that will move very quickly. Um, uh, we will work towards having a facilitated stream of goods between Colombia and the Netherlands. So that would make it very interesting for Colombian producers to use the port of Rotterdam to get their goods into the European Union. So that would actually be, uh, I think, a, a great win. Um, and then we'll also have enhanced cooperation on the enforcement of uh, in protection of intellectual property rights, um, drug trafficking, of course. And there will also be a technical collaboration between the Tax and Customs Administration of the Netherlands and the uh, Colombian uh, Dian, uh, because there's a lot of know-how in the Netherlands on risk management and the Colombian government is very much interested in getting some of this know-how to apply in their uh, ports and airports <coughs> excuse me, to uh, facilitate uh, the, the, the further growth of, uh, of trade. Um, it will also apply to the Caribbean part of the Kingdom, uh, which is uh, the, the islands of Aruba, Cuba, South Africa. So that was, is of course of interest to, uh, to Colombia because it's close uh, close by. And uh, I think I'll leave it to that because I've been flagged uh, with a zero uh, for a long time. So thank you for your interest. <laughs>